love it when a new student comes to me looking to gain distance off the tee. It's one of the most enjoyable things for me to teach. And let's face it, when you're playing golf and you hit a solid drive and you outdrive your buddies or your competitors in a tournament, it's one of the most enjoyable experiences of the day. Um, there's nothing like it. And the bragging rights that go along with it are fantastic. So when one of these students comes in looking for more distance, I'm going to give you a, some insight into how one of these lessons typically goes. Let's just say that Tim comes in. Chase, I really want to hit my drives farther. All of my buddies are out driving me. I know I can hit it farther. I was a good athlete in high school, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you got it, Tim. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to warm up, hit about 10, 15, 27 irons. Let me know when you're loose. As soon as you're loose, we're going to go to the driver. So Tim gets loose. He hits the seven irons. We go to the driver. And after every tee shot and every drive Tim hits, I want him to notify me on a scale of one to 10, how solid he's hit each drive. So 10 being dead solid perfect, one being really terrible, he's gonna hit a drive and let me know exactly how solid he hit it. So after about 15, 20 or so drives, finally Tim gets one that he loves, and it usually looks a little something like this. All right. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the club face. You can see I hit that ball, or Tim, I should say, hit that ball, basically dead center. And of course, I've just used some white powder spray here on the face to indicate where that ball was being struck. So again, a dead center strike. So what I'll do now is I'll take Tim back to the data, and I'll show him on track, man, just how far that ball went. And I'll explain a couple things to him. So it'll look like this. All right, so I'll take Tim over. We'll take a quick look at the track man data. And I'll explain to him, all right, Tim, on that last shot that you felt you hit perfectly solid. And we did notice, of course, the dead center strike on the club face. We saw that we had 105.4 miles an hour of club head speed, which is pretty good. We had a ball speed of 150.9. Our carry distance was 234.2. Our total was 242.5. All right, so that's what we had out of our 105.4 miles per hour. That's what the distance that we got out of that shot, knowing that we did hit that ball basically dead center. I'll show him the video as well, and let's just assume that in this case, Tim has a great looking golf swing. The, we'll draw a plane line on it. Two-dimensionally, we'll notice Tim does a great job of dropping the club back down onto the plane, coming from the inside. We can see that club face with that white powder on it here, and then of course again, dead center strike, we'll notice Tim. And then you can see actually the club face again here in the finish, and you can see that little uh, mark showing that dead center strike right there in the middle of the club face. So then what we'll do is I'll hop back up. I'm going to borrow Tim's driver. I'm going to hit a couple shots to demonstrate and to show him just how easy it is to gain significant yardage by controlling this one component of the swing that so many people don't know about and don't understand how to utilize. All right, so then I'll take Tim from the TrackMan data that we just analyzed back up to the mat. I'm going to take his own driver out of his own hands. I'm going to tee a ball up. I'm going to say, Tim, can you draw your attention to the same data points that we just studied? So club speed, ball speed, carry distance, and total distance. And I'm going to show you how I can actually outdrive you with your own driver with less club head speed. It'll look like this. All right, so now I'm at 101.6, just a little extra club head speed. Now I'm at 257.6 carry, 287 total. Still hitting the ball right in about the same spot of the club face as Tim. We'll do one more, see if I can get it up to about 290 without swinging even as fast as Tim was swinging. All right, so there's a really good example. I brought my club head speed up a little bit to 102. But again, just changing a couple of these little components about the strike that allow me to increase that distance up to 264 carry, 290 total. So again, now at this point, Tim has no idea how I did this. If we take a look at the driver between the shots that I hit and the shots that Tim hit, none of them are really varying off center much. So the quality of strikes seem to be great on both the shots I was hitting and the shots Tim was hitting. So I'll now take Tim back over the track man one more time and show him the data. And I'll show him just how important this one key data point is called attack angle. And I'll explain to Tim that attack angle is simply telling us at what point in the swing our driver is hitting the golf ball. So in other words, are we hitting that ball on the upswing? And if so, to what degree? Or are we hitting that ball on the downswing? And if so, to what degree? Now most of you out there that are really losing a lot of distance are just like Tim. You're hitting the ball a lot more on the downswing than you realize. You have to understand just how important it is to increase that positive attack angle and to hit that ball more on the upswing. And in doing so, 
you'll see just how much distance you can gain. So let's take a look at the data again now. All right, so we'll take Tim back over, we'll sit down, we'll analyze the data and give him a better understanding of just how I'm gaining so much more distance than him with less speed. So I've got Tim shot up here in yellow, and you'll notice his club speed at 105.4, his ball speed, and of course the carry of 234.2, the total of 240.25. And again, this was that center strike that he hit so solidly. And then I reveal this attack angle number, and we'll see that clearly I'm hitting the ball 4.5 degrees on the upswing on average, whereas Tim's hitting the ball three degrees down on his best shot. Because of that, I've got that nice high launch angle and that low spin rate, and that is one of the biggest values in maximizing and optimizing that upward attack angle. So just to compare, Tim's carry on his best drive, 234.2. Mine was 257. His total, 242. Mine was 290. So I gained almost 50 yards, caught 48 yards of distance, hit it 48 yards past Tim with a little bit less speed because I just increased that attack angle and increase the efficiency of the strike. Now, what's the difference in those two swings visually? If we look at them face on, I've got them queued up here on the swing analysis. The first swing here on the right, this was the model swing of Tim's, so to speak, where we were hitting down on that ball 3.0 degrees. And you'll notice just past impact that the head is not quite as far behind the ball, so there's not quite as much weight on the back or trail foot as the last swing I made, which is pictured here on the left, with that positive attack angle of 5.2 degrees. So again, right here, that head is just a little bit further behind the ball at impact than the first swing, so I've got a little bit more weight on my right or trail foot coming into the ball, which is providing me with the ability to hit up on the ball a little bit easier. So let's hop back up there now, and we'll go through a few examples of how you can improve your attack angle, hit the ball more on the upswing, and ultimately gain a lot of distance off the tee. All right, so what I need Tim and you to understand, for those of you that are hitting down the ball too much, is, again, understanding how your weight distribution will dictate your ability to hit up on the golf ball or hit it on the upswing. So, again, understanding that if I push forward too much, now take note of that attack angle number. Now, hey, look, I've got all my weight to my front side, and that's what I hear over and over and over from a lot of amateur golfers. I need to get through it. I can't get through it. So they're trying to get all their weight off their back foot and come forward. And as they do that, they think they're achieving a good, solid golf swing. They're used to seeing the guys on the PGA Tour with their weight on the front foot finish with your weight forward, but they don't realize just how negative of an, of an effect that plays on the attack angle. So then, contrary to that, if I just look like I'm hanging back on my back foot, although this might not look correct, but understanding how that weight distribution allows us to hit the ball in the upswing is really important. So you'll notice there, a little bit more weight behind the ball, a little more weight on the trail foot. Now I have a positive attack angle of 4.9 degrees. So understanding that the primary component we need to control is that attack angle, and then we can let momentum bring us forward eventually into a nice pretty finish, but we're never going to gain distance if we don't optimize this attack angle first. So that's first and foremost, understanding that you don't need to fire off that back foot forward as much as you think you do. Two more quick, simple examples I want to show you that aren't even related to your swing. Just very simple setup techniques and variables that will help you improve the attack angle without thinking about your golf swing at all. Alright, so clearly ball position is a really important and obvious component that we need to take account of. Most of you are under the impression that the ball has to be inside your left heel. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be. So I'm going to hit three shots quickly. One with the ball in the middle of my stance, one with the ball in line with my left heel, and one with the ball in line with my left toe. And you have to understand the significance of ball position and how it affects your attack angle. So we'll look at those three examples now. So middle ball position. Negative 7.8, ball in line with the left heel. Negative 0 0.5, now we'll go ball in front of the left foot. Positive 5.2 degrees, so that's just ball position. I now want to show you how important shoulder alignment is at address in affecting your attack angle as well. So, first thing we'll do is what most of you are doing improperly, you're setting up your shoulders too open because you're so anxious to see where the ball is going to go. So those setups look like this. Shoulders really, really open. If I set up with open shoulders, you'll notice tacking on negative 7.5 degrees. Now as I start to square those shoulders up a little bit to where 
A fundamentally neutral setup would be with your shoulders parallel to the target line. We'll notice what effect that has on attack angle. I'm able to go slightly positive from there. So now as I close my shoulders and aim them more right at the target, we'll notice that because of that left shoulder being back more, my center of gravity is behind the ball, and of course this becomes even easier to achieve a more upward attack angle. So now I'm at positive 6.5 degrees. So again, these are just a few of the 20 plus tips, setup techniques, and tactics that we've got for you on the advanced training program. But go ahead and start with these and understand first and foremost just how important it is to achieve this attack angle, just how much distance you have to gain, and then if you struggle with these, come back, see us on the advanced training. We've got so many more ways, and I don't accept you not gaining this 15, 20, 30 plus yards. It's absolutely doable. Attack angle is going to be one of the most crucial components to doing that. Beyond attack angle, we'll go into a little bit more detail about how to increase club speed, improve quality of strike, smash factor, all of the other components as well that can take you even further down the fairway and gain as much distance as you're physically capable of. So that's the ultimate goal, but let's start with attack angle. Let's start hitting some longer drives. Get back to us. Let us know your results. We'll look forward to your feedback.